Hey guys, Chris here. Today we're doing a different type of video because it's the holidays and it's in between Christmas and New Year's. I don't have, you know, the access to the press cars I usually have. So today we're doing a video where I'm going to read your comments, read your questions and well, laugh at some of them, answer some of them and, you know, just shake my head at others. So without further ado, let's go ahead and read some comments. So the first comment is from, uh, yeah, I'm not going to even pronounce that username, but he says, silly to make a car that has range than less than 321 kilometers or 200 miles. That is to my uh, E2008 Norwegian high speed run test. Um, yeah, um, I don't know what you're on about. Plenty of people can use a car that has 300 kilometers of range or less. <laughs> that isn't the problem at all. I mean, the first Nissan Leaf had like, I don't know, 150 kilometers of real world range. Maybe not even that, and they've sold a ton of those. So I'm not sure what you're on about, maybe for you, but yeah, plenty of people use a car with 320 kilometers range or less. Okay, next question. Drew B says, uh, this is uh, for my, one of my e-tron S videos. Uh, for goodness sake, we went to the moon in 1969 and in 2020, certain EV chargers don't work. Come on Audi and charger companies. Uh, yeah, I totally agree. We went to the moon for more than 50 years ago. Um, yeah, so I don't know what, why. Well, technology has gotten much more advanced in the last uh, 50 years. So maybe that is uh, the reason I'm not a programmer, so I, I wouldn't know. But yeah, well, we went to the moon 50 years ago. We would probably expect that charters would work flawlessly 50 years later. Some Russian uh, name, I can't uh, pronounce this, but he says, Siberia is watching you. Well, fantastic. Thank you for watching me from Siberia. Peter P says, Audi e-tron is a piece of junk, 55 minutes to be fully charged. Are you kidding me? Three exclamation marks. Um, I don't know what you're on about. I think this was my Audi e-tron video where I had a problem with the chem chargers, the Audi e-tron S where I only got like 95 kilowatt charging speed. Uh, you know, at that rate, yeah, um, it's in line with, uh, or it's even faster than the I-Pace, the EQC and other competitors. Um, but yeah, the Audi e-tron is one of the fastest, if not the fastest consistently charging EV on the market today. So yeah, I, I'm not really sure what you're on about. Only the Porsche Taycan uh, charges faster at average, um, a Model 3 maybe, but that remains to be seen. So yeah, uh, next question, TCLRK5 says is your weather always so dreary and i've all actually answered and also ule christer melvol uh, who also you know comments a lot on my videos thank you ule christer um, has also answered this <laughs> he answers that only in bergen um, yeah no it's not always this dreary but as ule christer says december has been exceptionally bad where we've only had like six hours of sun which is just crazy crazy but in Western Norway, actually, it's, it hasn't been that bad when I've been out traveling for work. So yeah, it's not always this dreary. Um, usually it's like this sometimes in the fall, but yeah, not through the whole December like it's been this year. It's been crazy bad. Exodus D says, as I mentioned in your previous video, EV cars are too stressful. I image, imagine these problems when you have two, three kids and your wife that you tried to convince her going uh, EV would be a wise choice. Well, technology sure is fascinating, but the best of two automotive worlds is the combination hybrid. <sighs> I totally understand your point from watching several of my videos where I've had, had trouble, especially if you're in a country or in your region where, you know, the infrastructure is just much less built out than here in Norway. I can totally understand your point. And EV, EV, you know, technology, the chargers, the reliability of chargers and cars just has to, has to improve massively before, you know, the mass market can move into EV. So I totally understand your point, though. I'm happy to be your, <laughs> uh, you know, to to experiment for you guys, and you know, uh, yeah. Uh <laughs> okay, Stefan R says I worked 
for three automotive companies as software engineer, partly in EV projects. When buying an EV, Tesla was a no-brainer. They are six to eight years ahead. These problems would be solved in the near. Crappy protocols, lacks of software engineering competence, and no spirit for EVs and OEMs will hurt e-mobility for years. Yeah, so that touches upon the last uh, comment, I think, and he's onto something there. Um, Bjorn also uh, talked about this in one of his Xpeng videos, where, you know, Xpeng or Xiaopeng uh, are one of the manufacturers who want feedback and work with feedback. Tesla was like this a while back, but it seems like they're not listening to consumers anymore. And Audi, you know, this big German automotive uh, company, you know, in, in the VAG group, the Volkswagen Audi group, um, seem to also not be listening too much to customers. Like, we want one pedal driving in the Audi e-tron. It's been out for almost two years now. We don't have it yet. Um, so there's a lot of things that um, the OEMs, as Stefan here says, that the OEMs just don't uh, want to touch. Uh, maybe, you know, the major projects of the automakers aren't, uh, they don't have enough resources. There may be many, many reasons, but I think he's onto something there that, you know, EVs have to be, you know, uh, the bread and butter of a company or, you know, the halo products of a company for them to really, you know, put the resources that is needed. So, yeah, it's kind of a, you know, half-ass project for many automakers, but uh, we're, we're getting there, we're getting there. Uno de Bazar says, Hi Chris, while calculating the range, do you think the car is also considering preheat uh, when you put the charge into destination according to cons uh, accordingly consider some energy loss? And then Ulrich Kister Melvol again um, has a brilliant comment here. I've monitored the battery temperature with the OBDE device on my e-tron 55 and it doesn't seem to warm up the battery neither on route or when preheating at home. Luckily, you still get decent speed even when the battery is cold and speed picks up quite fast all the way up to 150 kilowatts um, shown by me also many times and I think he's onto something there because I've talked about preheating, Bjorn has talked about preheating and it seems there isn't any reliable source to say that the e-tron preheats. Uh, the only, you know, thing or uh, uh, when this preheats it seems to be when it's minus 10 degrees Celsius outside but yeah uh, the, the, it heats up the battery pretty quickly when getting to a charger and you know get co connecting to a charger uh, you seem to be getting like uh, at least like 120 when the battery is cold but we can check now because I'm actually charging here at the 150 kilowatt BKK charger uh, and it was cold here and we are charging at 8 100 kilowatts at 80% state to charge. So yeah, uh, preheats the battery or heats up the battery quite quickly. Erling Erdvik says, Henry, after you angry lit, part you ikke valgt en Tesla. So he says, do you regret not choosing a Tesla? And yeah, this is probably the title, the thumbnail of this video. And a lot of people have commented on this. And I want to go back to Back in 2012 or 2013 when the Model S uh, came out, I was actually working in the car industry. I haven't talked about, upon, um, to, I haven't talked about this too much, but I worked in the car parts uh, and we also had a, a workshop where we serviced cars. We had a store, you, you can think about the past and the furious, uh, just for upmarket cars. We had a store that, you know, we tuned cars, uh, we also had, you know, workshop, we did services, we did, you know, maintenance, we did engine rebuilds, we did wheels and tires, uh, you know, mostly for, you know, the German cars. And the Model S was a very popular car um, when it came out in 2013, 2012 in Norway. It was the most sold car for like ages, the Model S. So we sold a lot of wheels and tire packages for that car. Actually, my sales record all time was... Uh, that before I quit that job. Uh, <laughs> that's a whole different point. But I remember when I, you know, started the new job, I looked at the Model S a lot because I wanted to get, yeah, I wanted to get an EV. I thought the Model S was a really, really cool car, but I ended up getting a Volvo XC90 D4 diesel because I traveled so much with work uh, around Norway, it just wouldn't work for me or it would be a real hassle. Today, well, I have my e-tron, so... <laughs> A very different story but I had to wait like I got my XC90 in 2015 ordered it late 2015 so I got it in February 2016 so now almost five years later 
driving in an EV in Norway is no problem at all for the work that I do traveling across Norway. Um, so I don't regret not getting a Tesla then, but I think he's referring to me not getting a Tesla now. Well, the Model S is still a brilliant car. I love the way it looks. It's one of my favorite cars, but it is a old car. You know, it came out in 2012, so it's an eight year old car now. This is a new car. And I've also grown to just love the luxury and quietness of what Audi offers. And that was also one of the reasons I chose my XC90, you know, instead of uh, the Model S. It's just the interior, the quality is just on another level. And I also like, you know, the, the SUV shape, uh, the high ground clearance, the practicality and, and, and stuff like that. So the Model S won't work for me. Um, the Model X, I'm not a huge fan of. I don't like the Falcon doors. I don't like the way it looks. It's a brilliant car, but I'm not a fan. So, Model 3, I've recommended that car on several occasions. You know, at the price point, I think it's the best purchase you can do. Um, but yeah, it's not, it's not an Audi e-tron. It's not a large, luxurious SUV. It's in a different class of vehicle. And yeah. So, the short answer to your question is, no, I don't regret not getting a Tesla because the problems I show you on video uh, are just, you know, uh, aren't the problems I always have, you know, when, 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 when charging. Um, it's been quite reliable and, and working quite nicely, um, but there seems to be a problem, especially, you know, this regards the, the Audi e-tron S video, and I'm going to do this later hopefully after New Year's, but there seems to be a problem with the cam power chargers with the Audi e-tron 60 or the S and the 50 and not the 55. Well, the 55 not getting full speed, but yeah. Um, a lot of chargers are reliable. BKK here connected two seconds, just charging right away. Circle K chargers seem to be very uh, reliable. Uh, Ionti chargers, once you have your charging card, seems to be very reliable. So. There are plenty of reliable chargers, but you know, I want to char try different chargers here on my channel, especially new chargers and new charging stations, you know, to give you guys, you know, to do the testing for you. So you know, you're not stuck with 2% state to charge and not a charger in sight. I want to be the person doing that, not letting you do that. So next, next question. Yeah, I can't pronounce this. Um, are you going to uh, try the Volvo XC40 P8? Yes. I have it after New Year, so next week, hopefully, I will be testing that car and I'll try to get the videos out next week for you guys. I'm very excited about the P8. MUF72020 says, Stavanger to Oslo shouldn't take more than an hour. Try an airliner next time. Yeah, um, yeah, a very funny story. Um, um, I think... Uh, there was, you know, some, some kind of envir environmental movement uh, in the United States who wanted to stop motor racing. And then they they wanted to stop, you know, the Daytona 24 hours race. And somebody did the calculations of, you know, all the racing, all the fuel, all the cars, transporting all the, the cars to, you know, the racetrack and the teams and so forth. And so, so you know, the whole, the whole event except all the spectators, of course, because, you know, spectators you'll have in any type of race, but the, the actual event, right? And they calculated how much fuel, how much, uh, you know, how much, how much pollution did this actually uh, uh, produce? And uh, they were quite shocked by the results that one flight from New York to London, one cross-Atlantic flight produced more emissions than the whole event. So yeah, that is my answer to your question. I'm driving in an EV in Norway where 99% of the energy is hydroelectric. So yeah, this really is a zero emissions vehicle in Norway after the vehicle has been produced. So yeah, I'm not gonna fly if I don't have to fly. And also it's COVID guys, you don't fly unless you have to fly. So yeah, that's my answer to that question. Okay, last question. FM Carve, I think he's an old time viewer who has, you know, watched my uh, Volvo videos also. So thank you FM Carve. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you're an old time uh, viewer of the channel. This is the reason I will not be getting an EV anytime soon. And this is also my Audi e-tron S video where I've you know, gotten most of these comments from because a lot of you guys commented there. Until charging infrastructure is sorted out of uh, sorted out this kind of trip with three kids at the back would simply be a nightmare. 
Um, I totally agree with you. Uh, if you have three kids in the back who are hungry, who are tired, who are thirsty, uh, you might run into a huge problem when the chargers aren't working. So I, I totally understand most of you guys out there. Um, so yeah, but hopefully me making these videos, Bjorn making his types of videos and other channels on YouTube, you know, highlighting the issues that are with charging, and this isn't, you know, on the daily, you know, I have trouble maybe one out of 10 times for charging, maybe one out of 20 times. And I know that is a lot for a lot of you guys, but yeah, um, I totally understand. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I've been wanting to make a video where I read out and answer your comments for a long time. And now that me not having a press car, uh, yeah, worked that perfectly fine. So I really hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, please drop me a thumbs up down below. And for more car content, as always, guys, please subscribe. See you guys later and goodbye.